So we've been talking about rearrangement reactions, and in the last video we went through hydride shifts, so one, two hydride shifts. And in this video, I wanna go through one, two alkyl shifts, which are related to hydride shifts, but they can have a few more complications as we'll see. So here we're gonna go through a few examples of alkyl shifts, and remember the key thing to keep in mind for rearrangement reactions is always carbocation stability. This is the most important thing. We always wanna go from a less stable carbocation to a more stable carbocation. So let's look at this problem here. Are we gonna have a rearrangement? And if so, what is it gonna look like? Well, first of all, it might help to just number our carbons here. So one, two, and three. And I would say normally draw out the hidden or implicit hydrogens. And that's been done on carbon number one here. Now we might also wanna draw out the hidden or implicit hydrogen on carbon number two. Okay, good. Now what type of carbocation do we have here? We have a carbon which is attached to two different carbons. So this is a secondary carbocation. And so we've identified the type of carbocation. What are the neighbors of this carbocation? Because our rearrangement is always gonna occur from the neighbors. So let's have a look. We have carbon one, which is a primary carbon. It's attached to three hydrogens. And we have carbon number three, which is a quaternary carbon. And I should say that this is not official IUPAC numbering. This is just keeping track of stuff numbering. So we have a, a quaternary carbon attached to four different carbons. Okay, so we've identified the types of neighbors we have. Next, let's ask what type of carbocation would we get if we rearranged from either of these neighbors? So if we were to try a rearrangement or a hydride shift from carbon number one, we can only migrate a hydrogen. That's the only group that it's possible to migrate. And if we did that, what would we get? Well, we would get CH2 plus two. Now we have a secondary carbon and C, 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 I'm not drawing CH3s. This would be a primary carbocation. And of course, that would be less stable than our secondary carbocation. This would be less favored. So we certainly do not want to do this rearrangement. This would not be a good rearrangement to do. Okay, so if that's not possible, let's ask ourselves what would happen if we would do a rearrangement from the quaternary carbon next door. So let's try doing that. Let's take this pair of electrons between carbon three and this CH3, and let's move our CH3 over one carbon. Let me make that arrow look a little better. There we go. Okay, so what would this product look like? We have an H, we have a CH3. Now we had no choice, right? We had three CH3s, so we could migrate any one of those three CH3s. And what are we gonna do here? Well, we're going to break the carbon three to CH3, and we're gonna form the carbon two to CH3. And that's gonna give us this product and we are going to be left with carbon three not having a pair of elect any electrons to this bond anymore. Those pair of electrons is CH3 is picked up and taken the kids. So the carbocation is left behind. And this would be a tertiary carbocation. And this started off as secondary. So this would clearly be favored. Would be favored uh, rearrangement. Okay, good. So let's look at the next type of rearrangement. And this is gonna be an interesting case for several reasons. We'll talk about those as we get there. But you can always sort of follow the same general pattern. And that is, I think it's a good idea to number everything. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, not official IUPAC numbering. This is very naughty. It's just keeping track of, of where the hydrogens are numbering. Okay and then draw in the implicit or hidden hydrogens. So carbon one has three, carbon two has one. The rest we can, I think, safely ignore. They won't come up. And then we wanna ask, what type of carbocation do we have? Uh, and let's use a slightly different color here. Let's use red. This is a secondary carbocation because it's attached to two carbons. Okay, so then let's ask, what type of neighbors do we have? Well, this carbon is a primary carbon, it's a primary carbon. So 
um, there's really only three hydrogens attached to it. This carbon next door is a quaternary carbon. It's a quaternary carbon which has four carbons attached. Now, the next question is to say, okay, what types of groups could migrate from either of these? So from the primary, we've already discussed the example of primary and why this would be bad. This would, this would not be a good rearrangement because we would get a primary carbocation. So our rearrangement, if it's going to occur, is going to occur from our quaternary carbon, and this would lead to a tertiary carbocation. Okay, now we have a little bit of a dilemma here. Do you see why? We have a CH3 and we have also carbon four and carbon six. These are both CH2s. So the question that comes up here is how do you decide which groups to migrate? Actually, you shouldn't say groups, I should say group. Which group? Which group to migrate? How do you make that decision? Question mark. Because we have a CH3 and then we have two CH2s. Well, let's just break this problem down a little bit. Let's draw a blue line between here and let's, let's draw these CH2s. Now, hopefully you can see that there's no difference actually between carbon four and carbon six. So these are exactly the same. There's no difference whatsoever between these. So the question is really, do we migrate carbon seven, the CH3, or do we migrate carbon four or carbon six? So let's try doing each of these in turn, okay? Let's try migrate, let's say, let's try migrating C7. So if we try and migrate C7, let's see, what's that gonna look like? We're gonna have this pair of electrons go from the pair of electrons between carbon three and the CH3, and they're gonna move to the carbocation, and that is gonna give us, and actually maybe I should draw this in green here, so C7. And this is going to give us this product. So we're still going to have the square. This is a cyclobutane. And we're going to have our new CH3 up here along with its pair of electrons that it takes along with it. I don't know if you can see the green. And um, uh, what are we doing here? CH3, CH3 three and uh, now what would happen to carbon where would our carbocation be well our carbocation would be four five six seven so carbon three lost that pair of electrons so that green those two electrons went from carbon three to carbon two that means that carbon three is now a carbocation and if you look at the bonds that you form and break here what did we do? We broke C3 to C7, so C3 to C7, so that's the CH3, right? And we formed C2 to C7. Okay, so it's a, now it's a tertiary carbocation, right? That's good, right? More stable than the secondary carbocation, so okay. Now, we're not quite done because before we mis decide that this is the best answer, we should really have a look at what happens if we try and migrate C4 or C6. And I think it's gonna be a little bit easier if we show the migration of C4, just because it lines up a little bit better. So let's try alternatively, I don't wanna draw all these electrons on the same thing. So um, let's redraw it a little bit. So let's say that we have this and a plus positive charge here, CH3, and here's our CH3, and let's take the red bond, and again, let's just use green, so green electrons here, and we'll number everything, of course, so carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six, and this is seven, so in this case, we're gonna migrate the bond between three and four. So pair of electrons between three and four is gonna to migrate to carbon two. What's this gonna give us? Well, let's, let's draw, and this is a case where it might help if you draw the ugly version first. What do I mean by drawing the ugly version first? Well, let's just copy everything that was written. Copy everything that was written. 
and we're going to just do exactly what the arrow tells us to do and no more. Okay, so what is this arrow telling us to do? This arrow, the tail of this arrow, we always start with the tail. The tail is telling us to break C3 to C4. So that is what we're supposed to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we are going to break C3 to C4. Let's do that. So it breaks. Okay, so we can take out the tail. Now what's that gonna do to uh, C4? Well, let's see what the, what the head is telling us to do. It's saying move this pair of electrons to C2. So we're moving this pair of electrons to C2. And this pair of electrons we drew in is green so they're going to form a new bond between C2 to C4. Now what about carbon-3? Now carbon-3 had a, was sharing a pair of electrons with carbon-4. Now it no longer is. So it has lost a pair of electrons. Uh, sorry, it hasn't lost a pair. It's lost an electron to itself. So it's going to go from neutral to positive. And carbon-2 has gone from missing, having only six electrons around it, and having a positive charge, a plus charge of one, to now it's actually got a full valence shell. It's got a full octet. So it goes from being positive to neutral. So it actually looks like this. And if we redraw this, this actually, it, you know, redraw it nicely, it looks like this, CH3, C, and let's just move stuff over a bit. CH3 and um, we've got a positive charge now on carbon five. Okay, so let's just redraw everything. One, two, three. And then four is down here. It's kind of weird, huh? Five, six, and then seven. Okay, and that's what it looks like. So that would be, so we can draw that. That's sort of like a weird looking equal sign we use in chemistry, this triple bond, not in acetylene equals. So that's the carbocation that we would get. Now let's ask ourselves, which is more stable? So sort of running out of space here. So let's, let's do this. So question, which is more stable? Well, this one on the left we said was tertiary, right? We formed a tertiary carbocation when we moved carbon three. Now, when we moved, and actually maybe I should have drawn this as red. This was the bond that we migrated. This is also tertiary. So there's actually no difference from that perspective, um, whether one is tertiary or one is the other. They're both tertiary. However, recall the fact that cyclobutane has a lot of what we call ring strain. So cyclobutane has 90 degree angles on the interior. Remember that ideally carbon wants to be 107, 109.5, sorry, 109.5. And therefore this is going to be a um, very unstable situation for carbon. So if it can migrate to give itself a five membered ring where there's very little, very little ring strain in C5. So very little ring strain, it's going to do so. So it turns out that this is actually, this is more stable than this. So this, this bond migration between C3 or C4, or C3 and C6, we could have done that too, they'd be the same, is actually favored. So this product is actually, this is actually favored. So watch out for ring strain when you do problems like this.